At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. Upbeat, positive, unstoppable. These are only three of the words that have been used to describe Comstock's magazine publisher, Winnie Comstock Carlson. Winnie and her magazine are often seen as one, a cheerleader for private sector achievements, actively involved in charity and philanthropy, and relentlessly pro-Sacramento region. Today, with Comstock celebrating its 25th anniversary, Winnie joins us to take stock of the past quarter century as a successful publisher and her view of what's in store for Sacramento. What does this anniversary mean for you? It means 25 years of hard work <laughs> and probably uh, that many or more to go. And when you look back at when you, this magazine started 25 years ago, tell us who Sacramento was back then. Sacramento was known as a cow town back then. It's, that thought still lingers among some people, but uh, it wasn't as fast moving. But to me, it was the big city. I grew up in a small town up north, Nevada, city, Nevada city, okay. and uh, uh, had the wonderful opportunity of living in a small town and all that that means. You know, you never lock your doors. You can go out and play all day and come home at dinner. And uh, I couldn't, but I couldn't wait to get out of Nevada City and make my way in the world. So the day after graduation, I was headed for the big city. <laughs> and the graduation from high school? Uh huh. Nevada Union. Nevada yeah. Union. All right. All right. Great basketball team. Uh, every once in a while. Every once in a while. Every <laughs> once in a while. So you came to the big city, and and what happened next? Well, I uh, went to work for the legislature. And I had some wonderful positions there, ultimately with the Speaker of the House, Leo McCarthy, and I enjoyed it. I was there for about 12 years, worked for uh, the Water Committee, worked for um, uh, the Majority Floor Leader, and ultimately worked for the Speaker. And, and so you worked in the legislature. Now, most people who get into that world, they stay within that world for their entire careers. What brought you out, out of that environment? I decided that it was time to give back. And I um, uh, wanted to get involved in some nonprofit organization, and I uh, became involved with uh, the Children's Home out on Setterville Road. And they were in the process of considering building what is now the Casa, which they used to call the Casa de los Niños. And so I wanted to get some volunteer work, and I worked in the kitchen, and I was on the menu committee, and on and on. And um, uh, then I got involved with the Junior League. And with the Junior League, uh, the first thing out of the box was putting on a big show. And I got onto the steering committee because I wanted to do the singing and dancing and I wanted really? to uh, I wanted to uh, be actively involved in it. Uh, and so they put me on two committees. One was to sell tickets and the other one was to sell advertising in a calendar, week at a glance calendar that we'd be giving out to all of the people that attended the show. Well, the show was an incredible success. and. I really sold the socks off of this <laughs> uh, uh, in this calendar program and just loved every minute of it. Did you know that you had that no, those type I, of sales skills? I barely knew how to spell advertising. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke, but uh, but one of the people that I sold an ad to had just started Sacramento Magazine. And in fact, they had like two or three issues out. This was back in 1976. And uh, they just had a few issues out, and he was, after the show was over, he was all over me to hire me into the sales team. And um, I ultimately, he had, he worked on me pretty hard over the course of several months, but ultimately I went to work for him, and that's how I got into this field. Wow, and, and so he just stole you away from the legislature. It was a big decision on my part because I loved the legislature, but he kept telling me that I had the skill that he could just tell I was going to be successful and this would be a great opportunity to get out and do something new. And um, 
after studying it for a long period of time, I thought, you know, this is a great opportunity to try something new, and I really have nothing to lose. Now, you were working for the speaker and all that, and so that's sort of like the highest realms of that world. What did your colleagues in the legislature have to say about you going, leaving them to go into advertising? Well, there were many people that thought I was crazy, but there was one woman on my staff, and uh, I didn't really think about it too much at the time, but uh, she seemed to have this knack at um, um, telling, not telling the future, but kind of seeing things that were going to happen in people's lives. And one day she was doing this, whatever she was doing, uh, and she, she was re doing a reading on me, I guess that's what she would call it, and she said, Winnie, one of these days you're going to be heavily involved in some kind of something. She says, I'm not quite sure, but it's some kind of a communications thing. And I said, well, I'm involved in communications right now, so this must be it. That, that's what I do for the speaker. I'm involved in all the incoming and outgoing mail. And she says, oh, no, 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 that's not it. It's going to be much bigger. Well, I kind of put that aside thinking, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I look back on it now and I thought, wow, what was that all about? She was right. I guess she does have some <laughs> skill, doesn't she? I'm wondering, where is her? Where is she? I remember her name was Doris, but beyond that, I cannot remember. Hmm. Now, now in doing that show out at uh, or the fundraiser for the children's home, that was it, Virginia Lee. Yeah, yeah, it's very interesting because you've gone on, and many of the biggest events that hit this town. I mean, things like Perspective, where we're bringing in, in you know, world class speakers. world class speakers and things like that. So you've never lost that thread. <laughs> That's very. Uh, that's interesting. It's just your shows have gotten bigger. I, I guess <laughs> we'll say, right? Right. And we did the um, uh, we did the big uh, women's conference last year, which was fantastic. What was that? What was that? It was. I partnered with uh, Health Corps, which is Dr. Oz's foundation. <clears throat> And uh, we put on a women's conference uh, for 1,500 women that came from a lot of, well, most of them from the region, but many of them came from around the country. And we had Dr. Oz's wife, Lisa Oz, as one of the keynote speakers and uh, a number of other people. And it was just a great show. It was an all-day event at, um, at the convention center. You know, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I do want to ask, you going into, leaving the legislature, going into the advertising field, and ultimately becoming a publisher, you're a bit of a pioneer and trailblazer when it comes to being a woman executive. And uh, what was it like uh, uh, going out and going from the government to being a, a businesswoman on your own? Tell us about that, uh, that environment and what you encountered there. I don't think there was anything particularly unusual there, but it was just a comp it was a different animal. Um, but it was something that was very exciting because at the legislature you're not tied to a desk, but virtually you are. And in my business, I was in sales, of course, for 14 years before I had my own magazine. But it was out and about, going to events almost every single night, and. Um, um, you know, making, being on the phone or setting appointments all day long, trying to get appointments. If you weren't out at appointments, you were trying to get the appointments. Well, the reason so. I'm asking is, you know, uh, Mad Men, the show Mad Men, mm -hmm. uh, I was recently watching it, and, and one of the most interesting things that it catalogs is the evolution and progression of women within the advertising world and some of the challenges that they, f they faced. But I guess what you're saying is your transition was fairly easy. My transition was, very, uh, was quite easy, yes. And I, I don't take any of the credit for it, but I was successful in selling right from the get-go. I remember the first ad I sold was um, uh, once I joined Sacramento Magazine, it was their bicentennial issue. And of course, I'm scared to death. I don't know what to say when I go into an appointment. I mean, I'd never been trained at that. So I had an appointment with Chuck Hills, who at the time was the marketing director for Crystal Creamery. And I went in and I told him what we were doing. And I, and I said, I want you to buy uh, some, I, I always went for the big thing. I want you to buy the back cover of the bicentennial issue. Well, anyway, I walked out of there after this presentation with a signed contract, a check <laughs> Wow! <laughs> for the back cover. And I went back to Sacramento Magazine to my boss and I said, well, let's see, I'm not sure I did this completely right. But I went in and I pre presented the magazine this way, this way, and this way. And then I asked him if he would buy the back cover and he ultimately said yes. And so I filled out this contract and here it is right here. And, and I, I got a check from him. So 
did I do okay? <laughs> and he about fainted. <laughs> that reminds me. That reminds me of the story about the 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 young kid in this company sales bullpen, who they send out to see the roughest customer that no one's ever been able to close, and he comes back with the order because he doesn't know that this person never ever buys. And sometimes it's all a question of attitude and moxie, huh? Well, it is, and for me, I didn't know what I didn't know. Right. So, and I didn't know what I was supposed to do or what I wasn't supposed to do, so I just... Did it. Did it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew what the goal was. The goal was to bring back the order, but right. I didn't really know the sequence of how that works. Right. So, what led you ultimately to the founding of Comstocks? Well, I was in sales for uh, five years with Sacramento Magazine, and then the founder of that magazine started another magazine. I jumped ship and went to that, and worked there for nine years, and one day I went to work, and the door was bolted shut. And this was as a result of, well, the new owner of the magazine, it had two ownerships. Uh, the new owner of the magazine, uh, his regular business had had some major challenges. And so um, uh, he decided that to compensate, he had to close down the magazine. So it was a surprise to me, but I went to work, no business, realized what had happened, went home, started pondering, okay, what do you do next? <laughs> and um, uh, I thought about it for a long time. I decided that I don't ever go backwards. I always go forward. So going back to the legislature was out of the question. And um, I uh, wanted to stay in sales, so I started thinking about different industries and nothing touched my heart. About two weeks into it, I went to bed and not knowing what I was going to do, woke up with a start at three o'clock in the morning. I mean, you know, a start. And there before my eyes was a room size edition of Comstock's magazine Comstock's at the top and a big 15 on the front. And I said, Lord, are you telling me I'm supposed to start a magazine? And um, I sat up and pondered the whole thing. And it's like he'd given me, dictated a business plan to me. I mean, I owe it all to him. I take credit for anything that's happened in the last 25 years. And, and uh, sure enough, the next morning, I'm on the Secretary of State's doorstep at 9.30 and I'm writing a check to start my own magazine. And so that was, that's the way it got started. Wow. <clears throat> and, and in the beginning, when you started this magazine, <clears throat> who did you lean on in terms of taking this vision and making it a reality? I relied totally on the Lord. And anybody that knows me knows that I'm a woman of faith. And uh, he has opened the doors. He's helped me say the words that I'm supposed to say, and I give him all the credit. And, and where does that faith come from? It was, uh, uh, it was, in, it was born in me. I, I remember when I was uh, about 10 years old walking down the street in Nevada City and, th and, and praying to the Lord, oh Lord, just give me peace of mind. I remember having a lot of, of angst always going on, a lot of confusion and um, just give me peace of mind. So, the, and my mom sent me to catechism from a very young age. So. It was always in me, and my family is a family of great faith as well. Who inspires you, Winnie? Besides the Lord? Yes. Uh, people that have done something that's unique, that has brought something really special to the community that we can write about in the magazine, that is inspiring to me. If you were to think back over the 25 years, and all of the stories that the magazine has done, and all the personalities that have been featured, does one really pop out at you in terms of one that really inspired and touched you? Well, I can say one thing that I'm fe I feel extremely excited about because we planted a seed and, uh, and it grew to be something very big. Uh, and that's the thing that comes to my mind as you ask me that question. <clears throat> Years ago, do you remember when, uh, when McClellan was closing? And everybody was basically thinking, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling, <laughs> what are we going to do? And nobody seemed to have any answers. And so uh, I started thinking, let's, this is the day when we were doing a lot of roundtable discussions. And I thought, let's do a roundtable discussion and we're going to bring people from the development community all around the region and we'll get some people that have been involved with uh, bases and maybe even base closures that can, will come. And, um, uh, let's have a discussion on what happens, what we can do after base closure. What's, what, what can we do with this base? And so it all came about. And the night before this breakfast uh, event was going to take place, 
I started thinking, you know, I really want Larry Kelly here. And he was on our editorial board, so I could get a hold of him very easily. And he wasn't, he hadn't responded. So I called him on the phone and I said, Larry, I really want to have you at this discussion. And he said, oh, Winnie, I'm not really interested in what's going on with McClellan. I said, you know, this is the biggest infill project in the world, probably. There's great opportunity. And you've done Stanford Ranch. You've done all of these projects around the country with your finance partners. I know you're going to have something to add to the conversation. So uh, he said, oh, all right. So he came. He went to the, uh, the breakfast forum. And he was the last one to leave. And he said, as he was leaving, you know, I've decided I'm going to be the developer of McClellan. Really? <laughs> and the rest is history. So. Uh, and you had your party and we, out there. Exactly. We had our party out there. And uh, so he, uh, he got his, of course, he got his finance team together. And we did a story on the, on the forum, uh, which we did all the time uh, when we did one of those forums and uh, those roundtable discussions. And, and it was just great because look what's happened. What a success story right. McClellan is now. And now he's working, of course, on hopefully doing the same thing with the rail yard. So we're very excited about that. Isn't that amazing? It is. When you think about <coughs> Comstocks and its role within the region, how do you describe it when you're, when you're telling outsiders who aren't from here, what's, what is Comstocks' role? Well, Comstocks is the region's business magazine. We cover 10 counties around Sacramento. We coined the phrase capital region. California's capital region, which everybody uses now. But I describe it as a, not only a business magazine, but a forum to exchange ideas and to celebrate successes and to share, to educate, inform uh, uh, different people. And you know, all the stories that we do, uh, there's usually s several nuggets in them that are extremely wise advice for others in completely different industries that might have that might be a way to uh, solve issues that they're going through. So we use it as an ed we think of it as an education tool. We think of it as a um, uh, something that brings community together. Well, one of the most interesting things about the magazine has always been this multiple focus. And while it's all that you say, it also has a very very strong tie on a consistent basis back to philanthropy and civic participation and giving back. Was that intentional or was that organic in how that Well, happened? I always have had from years even before the magazine, I've always had a heart for what happens with the nonprofits and I have a heart for giving back. And, you know, largely the magazine is my way of giving back to the community and I think of it in those terms. It's not about how do we make Winnie a wealthy woman. That doesn't even enter the picture and it doesn't even matter. Uh, it's what can I do that's productive. But um, from the beginning, uh, nonprofits would come to me and say, oh, Winnie, wouldn't you do a story about our agency? We really want to reach the business community. So we would do a story on them, and uh, periodically we'd do another one on another, another agency. And um, after a, a few years of doing that, I wanted to do something that was bigger, and we dedicated an entire section of an issue, our December magazines, uh, to the nonprofit world, and we came up with this section that we'd call Capital Region Cares. And Capital Region Cares grew and grew and grew to the point that it wasn't just in the December issue. It was a part one and a part two. Then another year it was a part one, two, and three, and then a part one, two, three, and four. So then we would combine all of those sections, and they were all stories about nonprofits that would be sponsored by me and sponsored by other business uh, businesses around the region. And now it's a almost a 160 page book. Once we've wow. combined all of those, mm. we just had uh, the 19th annual Capital Region Cares uh, showcased at our anniversary event last Thursday. And it's almost 160 pages and it is a wonderful um, resource on who's doing what and how and uh, uh, what what missions all of these nonprofits have and how they're making a difference in our region and you know there's no way that that government or any in 
separate person can handle all of the ills of any region. You know, we've had challenges ever since the beginning of time, the beginning of civilization. There've always been needy people. So um, I just feel that this publication is a way of drawing in businesses to support, to take some kind of stand, write a check, get on a board, uh, get involved, send a team of volunteers, do something that is going to give to the community to handle those issues that otherwise would be left hurting. And, and given the significant amount of business participation in helping to sponsor all of the nonprofits that are in that section and in that book on an annual basis, mm -hmm. what does that tell you about our region? Well, and I've, our business class here. I've always believed, and it is an absolute fact, we have some very, very generous people. We have, there's always the ones that, that give to everything, you know, um, uh, which, and we see their names come up all the time. But everyone in this region has a strong heart for something. You just have to draw it out of them. And you have to kind of show them how what they're doing can make a difference and what else they can do that will make a bigger difference. Now, you know, um, it's said that we don't give as much regionally, and that's everybody, not just business, but regionally, as much as maybe some other cities or regions do. But we had recently this big day of giving that yes. did off the charts off success. The chart. And I wonder whether or not uh, events like that and also the success of your publication are, are sort of portents of things to come. Well, I believe they are, and I believe that, that efforts like that uh, just um, punctuate the fact that this is something that is needed, and yes, you, Joe, you, Bob, you can be a part of it, and people just tend to um, get excited when there's something rallying around a cause. Well, let's talk about rallying around a cause. Mm -hmm. S this region, two years ago, Forbes said, that we were more destitute and a worse place to do business in than the city of Detroit, which uh, many of us found somewhat astounding. Mm -hmm. But um, a, a lot is changing. What, what has you most hopeful for the future these days? Well, I am the most excited about what's happening in our downtown. And I have seen from, uh, actually when I was a child, you know, a, a giant spotlight in the sky. And you know how the light travels at a certain speed and it's this is a spotlight shining on Sacramento but it hasn't gotten here yet but it's coming it's getting closer and I think that the uh, downtown arena and what's going to be happening with all of downtown is going to be the catalyst for a wide growth and exciting time for our region. Will it matter to the people in Nevada City though and the people in El Dorado Hills and in Yellow because sometimes people think that we're too Sacramento centric you know, that we don't pay enough attention to the other parts of that 10 county region that you focus on, so. Well, I think all of the, reg all of the parts of uh, the capital region have their own charm and their own uniqueness, but it will matter to them because they will have, there will be, it'll be a destination to come to. We're going to have all kinds of entertainment venues, all kinds of restaurants. Uh, we're going to have the arena for shows, for sports. Uh, uh, the housing that's going to come about down here as a result of that growth that will happen uh, is very exciting. And, and, and everybody will enjoy it. Everybody's going to come here to enjoy it. The other type of growth that you've been focused on recently is the younger people that are starting to get involved in our region. Mm -hmm. uh, and recently you covered that as well. Tell us, tell us what your hope for the future is in terms of the people who ultimately are going to be taking our place. Well, there are so many changes going on in our world, and I feel so blessed to be living in the time that we're living, and you probably, I bet you do too, because we've I seen do. so much change. And with the changes in technology and the, ch and the changes in thinking, we need new thinking. We need, as a magazine, as a region, we need new thinking, we need younger ideas. We need to uh, create jobs here that are going to keep our bright, graduates from all of our wonderful universities here in Sacramento. So um, uh, I, I think that um, uh, the young people are the answer 
for that. Uh, and so we put an entire issue focused on these young people and I'm amazed at what they're doing. They're all leaders. They've gone through the, uh, the Your Emerging Leaders uh, program and it's many of them and it's been, it's going to be a very exciting time. We need to engage them. We need to have opportunities here for them to live, to grow, to work, to play so that we can keep them here because they are what's going to be our future. All right. And in our final moments, Winnie, could you share with us 25 years from now, Comstock's uh, readership is 10 times as large as it is today. Give us one or two things that you think will define that Sacramento a quarter century from well, now. Well, you know, uh, times are changing in the technology world, as I said, and Comstocks will always be the magazine because without the magazine, there won't be uh, anything else. But we are so engaged in the digital and the and the uh, web version of our magazine because that's where the young readers are going. Um, we're seeing a lot of it with newspapers and with some magazines. Uh, niche magazines seem to be growing gangbusters, but uh, that that change in, in technology is, is going to make a, a huge difference in our region in terms of how business is done. So uh, Comstocks will uh, hopefully be still around then. But you know, I've, from the beginning, I've thought it will be here for about as long as the Lord wants it to and as long as we're doing something that makes a difference. And we're gonna leave it there. <laughs> Thank you. And that's our show. Thanks to our guest and thanks to you for watching Studio Sacramento. I'm Scott Syfax. See you next time right here on KVIE. At Five Star Bank, community is at the heart of what we do. Every day we strive to have thoughtful solutions for our customers and help our communities prosper. Honest dialogue about the issues affecting the region is vitally important to that prosperity. We are proud to be part of the conversation and hope you'll join in. All episodes of Studio Sacramento, along with other KVIE programs, are available to watch online at kvie.org video.